today is Easter Saturday and we are in Foy. It's a beautiful day, although it is very windy. Um, and we just want to show you some of the things you can see and do in Foy. This is Ready Money Cove near Foy. It's an incredibly popular beach, especially in the summer when the weather's nice. You can hardly get onto the beach for the number of people. Near here, there's a place called St Catherine's Castle. And that was an old castle that was built in Henry VIII's time for defence. And across the other side of the river, there was another castle as well. The port of Foy is incredibly busy. Sometimes there's cruise ships in here, ships come for the China clay, and it's also a real home for racing as well, yacht racing, little boats, that kind of thing. That's Pol Ruin on the other side of the river there. And I said to you earlier on that there was St Catherine's Castle. On the other side there was another castle, and there was a chain that used to be pulled up between the two to stop any enemy ships from coming into this estuary. That was in Henry VIII's time, apparently a very effective way of defending this popular port. On the other side of the river is Pole Ruin, and about every 15 or 20 minutes there's a little ferry that plies its way across from one side to the other. Very popular in the summer and often you have to queue because you can't get on it.
The house with the blue shutters that you can see in the background, that's Daphne du Maurier's old house, Budinic. She wrote most of her books here, and Foy was a very, very popular place for her. And in fact, an awful lot of the films that have been made here are based on Daphne du Maurier's books as well. In Foy is the church of St Fimbarus. This church dates from the 1450s when sadly it was attacked by the French before being rebuilt in the 1500s. Nowadays the church unfortunately made the national news because they don't want a female vicar to be presiding over their services. Hello and welcome to Lerin. This is where we are this afternoon in beautiful little Lerin, just up the river from Foy. This is actually the Lerin River which goes into the Foy River. Um, we're going to talk about that bridge to start with. That bridge dates from Elizabethan times and apparently in 1540 something Queen Elizabeth I levied a tax on silver that was mined nearby to try and enable that bridge to be rebuilt. It's very narrow, not designed for cars at all, but cars still go over it. And then we've also got stepping stones here as well. And there's quite an interesting story about these stepping stones, which involves my mother. Um, because we came here for a walk one day with her dog and my dad. And um, we all it was a horrible day, so we all piled out the car, wrapped everything up, got all these layers of different things on. And there was lots of people sitting in their car reading papers. We got out, we got halfway across the stepping stones. Mum missed her footing, fell in the river. So we all had to go back again and we do know that the people next to us in the car we could just see their papers shaking up and down as they were laughing at us. You can't really blame them either, can you? I came here one day and Roger was videoing the tide rising which he was going to make into a sort of a, a short film about the, the, the water and um, there was a man who came up and said oh I've been sitting here for ages and there's a kingfisher so we watched and watched and watched and suddenly Roger said oh yeah there's a flash of orange and there or blue I should say blue rather than orange and there was um, a kingfisher and we watched it for ages and ages just darting in and out of the water feeding it was absolutely amazing so if you ever want to see kingfishers come to Lerin. Lerin is a lovely little community. It has a lovely little school, about 40 odd pupils in it at the moment. It has a pub and a, and a church, obviously. Um, the thing with Lerin is it does flood relatively frequently. And there's a sign in the car park that says if you've parked there when it's high spring tides, who knows what might happen to your car when you come back. Um, it was also a very well-known place for smuggling, particularly smuggling rum. Welcome to Tivoli Park. This was named after Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen. It was built in the 1850s by a man named Richard Parkin, who was a China clay magnate. And basically he was part of what was known as the Lerin Regatta Group. And there was a big regatta here every year, which at its height attracted more than 4,000 people. And in the early 1920s, they decided they wanted to add something to the regatta. Richard Parkin had bought this land and decided to build his own version of Tivoli Gardens. And this is a small section of what's left 
and there were bandstands, there were pools, there were fountains, all kinds of things for people to come and enjoy. And what we do know is that in 1968, more than 4,000 people came to the regatta and enjoyed the Tivoli Gardens. So in the 20s, when, the, when this was built, this was basic, basically a pleasure gardens. So lots of fountains. There was also a running track, apparently, as well. And people would be in the pleasure gardens while the, while the regatta was going on. The only thing is, because it's quite a tidal river, they did need to make sure they planned the time very carefully. Because if you look now, there's not going to be much racing on that river at the moment. <laughs> 